Hey there, it's Carlo from All You Can Board, dishing up another how to play video. Today we're going to be looking at Gizmos, which is a really fun two to four player engine building game by Phil Walker Harding and Come On Games. In Gizmos, players take on the role of inventors at the world's great science fair. We as inventors are competing to gain these energy marbles from here in order to build gizmos to trigger chain reactions which allow you to do more and more on each turn as the game goes on. At the end of the game the player with the most points wins. Let me show you how to play. Alright we're gonna set up for a two-player game. First deal each player out one of these dashboards along with a storage ring. Randomly determine the starting player they will get the brown dashboard. Each player then takes one of these starting gizmos, which are all the same for each player. Then take the other gizmo cards, dividing them into the deck based on the level, and deal out in the middle of all the players four level 1 gizmos, three level 2 gizmos, and two level 3 gizmos. For the level 3 deck, you'll actually shuffle them up and remove 20 at random before dealing out those two. Then you'll put the energy dispenser somewhere in the middle, accessible to all players, and fill it with the marbles. Then ensure that all victory point tokens are within reach of all players. So before we get into how your turn works, I'd like to show you a bit about the player dashboards as well as the gizmo cards themselves. So we'll go over the dashboards from left to right. The first slot here is for upgrades. These icons here mean this is the limit of energy you can store in your storage ring, so five of those energy marbles. Here is your upgrade limit, which applies to your archive that you'll keep on this side of the board, which I'll go over a bit later. And this little magnifying glass with the three refers to your research amount, which I'll also mention later. These upgrades uh, show what you have at the start, but they can always be increased later. This converter slot is for gizmos that allow you to convert energy into different types or different quantities. We'll look at some of those more closely in a moment. These next four, file, pick, build, and research, represent the four actions you can take on your turn which we'll go over in detail when we get to the player turns section. Now for the gizmo cards. The top left corner will have a symbol that represents which part of your dashboard that gizmo will go under once you've built it. For example, this plus sign would go under your upgrades. Next to it will show what the gizmo actually does. In this case, this one here will provide you with plus one to your storage capabilities in your storage ring, as well as plus one to your research amount. This stays there for the whole game. The top right corner will dictate how many points the gizmo is worth at the end of the game. The bottom left corner shows the cost and energy type required. We'll go over some of the gizmo abilities later. Now let's look at the four possible actions you have on your turn, which are file, pick, build, and research. We'll start with file. The file action allows you to choose one face-up gizmo card from any row in the display area and place it in your archive over here next to your dashboard. Keep in mind there is a limit at the start to only one gizmo in your archive, so once you have one there, you can't file again and replace it. You must build that one from your archive before you can archive a new one. After taking the gizmo from the display area, take a new one from the top of the corresponding deck to replace it with, and your turn will be over. Now when you choose pick, it allows you to choose one energy from the six available in the energy row from the dispenser and then you add it to your storage ring. Again, keep in mind you start with a storage limit of five, but there are gizmos that allow you to increase that number. It's important to note that some abilities may let you draw a random energy signified by this symbol here. This is not a pick action. In those cases, you don't take from the energy row. Instead, you draw blindly from the top of the dispenser. Note the distinction between the icon for picking one specifically from the energy row which has the little hand symbol which is different from when you are able to draw random energy from the top of the dispenser which is signified by this marble with the question mark inside. Similar to upgrades, once you reach your limit of energy rings in your storage ring you cannot pick another one, add it in and remove one to replace it. You must spend them or increase the size before you can pick again. The build action allows you to choose one face-up gizmo card either from this display area or from your archive. Spend energy from your energy storage ring matching the energy type and cost of the gizmo and when you spend the energy you just place them back into the top of the energy dispenser. Once again, once you buy from the display area, you replenish the missing card. Note, each gizmo will only cost one type of energy. For example, 1 atomic, 3 heat, 5 electric. Though some gizmos, like this level 3 gizmo, that are multicolored, allow you to spend 7 of any energy type to buy them, symbolized by that X where the energy symbol would normally be for the other gizmos. After building a gizmo, place it below your player dashboard in the area corresponding to its gizmo type, 
So again, match the top left corner of the gizmo with the symbol on the dashboard. The research option allows you to choose any face down level deck, level one, two, or three, and draw a number of cards equal to your research amount. You may not draw from more than one level deck at a time. After you draw the cards, choose one of them and either build it if you have enough energy or file it if you have space in your archive, or you can choose to do neither, but you don't get to replace that with another action on your turn. Whether you actually did build or file, Either way, return the remaining research cards to the bottom of the corresponding deck in any order you choose. Note, the file or build action you perform during a research action also counts to trigger active gizmos. Speaking of which, let's look at how you trigger gizmos now, which is really the core mechanic of this game and what makes it so fun, and allows you to have these sprawling explosive turns where you get a lot done compared to the start of the game. So whenever you perform one of those four actions on your turn, file, pick, build, or research, make sure to check all of your gizmos under that corresponding section to see which ones you can trigger. You can activate any effects in any order, but only once per gizmo per turn. For example, with this starting gizmo that everyone has under the file section, this means that every time you file a gizmo, you also take a random energy from the dispenser. So if I were to file one of these right now, I could trigger this gizmo and use that ability. Keep in mind that nothing under the upgrade section will ever trigger. However, converters allow you to convert energy into different types or different quantities, as long as you're spending that energy on the same turn. For example, if I had this converter here that allows me to convert one battery into two batteries, as long as I had one battery in my energy ring and I was gonna be spending that on something this turn, I could use that, convert it to two, and then immediately spend those two batteries on something else. It's important to note that you can use a gizmo on the same turn it was built, but not the same action that built it. For example, this one here, once you have it, means that for the rest of the game, anytime you build a gizmo from your archive, it allows you to pick two energy marbles of your choice from the dispenser. So if I were to build this from my archive, the ability would not trigger immediately as the gizmo was not part of my dashboard before I built it. As you build more and more gizmos and your dashboard starts to fill up, it increases your ability to create wild chain reactions on your turn where sometimes you're triggering five, six, seven, even more gizmos all at once. This is where it becomes really important to make sure you're optimizing the order that you're using them in to be as efficient as possible with your turns. Players will continue alternating turns using one of these four actions until one player has either built their 16th gizmo, including the starting one, or their fourth level three gizmo. At which point, based on who is the first player, we'll ensure the round completes so that everyone got an equal amount of turns. Then we'll look at final scoring, which we'll do now. Scoring is really quite simple. Just add up all the points on your gizmo cards, which is in the top right, and then add up the points of your victory point tokens if you have any. That's it, that's your final score. If the score is tied, the first tiebreaker is the player with the most active gizmos in their dashboards, so that does not include your archive, would win. If it's still tied, the player with the most energy left in their storage ring wins. If it's still tied, the third and final tiebreaker is whoever sat furthest away from the starting player in the turn order would win. The last thing we'll go over is some more of the effects that can trigger on your gizmos. Let's take a closer look. For example, this one here means that anytime you build a blue gizmo, you would take one victory point token. For this gizmo, anytime you build a red or blue gizmo, you get to pick an energy of your choice from the dispenser. Gizmos like these don't really have effects, they more determine your endgame scoring. So for example, this gizmo here gives you points for every victory point token you have. So if you had seven points from victory tokens, this would also be worth seven points. There are all sorts of converters that allow you to convert either into more of the same energy type or different. For example, this one allows you to convert an atomic energy into any energy of your choice, symbolized by this X. If ever you see a build with a number like this, for example, like this build with this two, this means that this type of effect triggers whenever you build a level two gizmo. There are also negators, which actually invalidate a certain action. For example, this one, when built, means that you can no longer perform a file action for the rest of the game. There's a variety of effects in the game, and there's a reference sheet that comes with it in case you're wondering what any of the others do. And that's how you play gizmos. Keep an eye out for our upcoming written and video review, and check out any other content on any other games on our website at www.allyoucanboard.com. Check us out on social media as well. Thanks for watching.